Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to Bradenton Kiwanis. It's a wonderful day. We have a very special program here for you today and, uh, and also a very special guest. So because of that and in the interest of time, we do want to, um, to get right started. First, let's do our announcements. There, remember, we do have our signature project. Our signature project is Christmas in August. It is July 28th. We start at the nice early hour of 6.30 a.m. We do believe it's the uh, hottest day of the year. It's hot, I'll tell you. That's why we're starting early. Uh, but, but for such a worthy cause, making sure our, our uh, homeless children here in this community have what they need to be able to get back to school. Many thanks to Linda Agresta and Brett Pollack. They've been working so hard, as has their committee. Um, we just, we th we're so thankful for you. Thank you so much. To that end, uh, Linda does still need a few more supplies if you're interested in donating. She needs composition books, index cards, three ring binders, and about 50 backpacks and paper. Uh, Linda, stand up and wave. That way they know who you are. And if you, if she also, I'm assuming, takes cash. And now it is my distinct honor to welcome our uh, speaker for today, Senator Darrell Irvin Rusan, has earned a reputation as a trailblazer in business and in the community. In 1981, he became the first African-American prosecutor in Pinellas County. In 2003, he was appointed the first chairman of the newly formed Substance Abuse and Addiction Task Force for the National Bar Association. Senator Rusan also served as president of the St. Petersburg NAACP from 2000 till 2005 and served on the Taxation and Budget Reform Commission in 2007. In April 2008, Mr. Rusan's years of activism, bold leadership, and community service culminated in his being elected to represent Tampa Bay in the Florida House of Representatives. He served as a representative for eight years and was termed out of office. In 2016, he was elected state senator for District 19, which includes portions of Pinellas and Hillsborough counties. Senator Rusan has a passion for reforming the criminal justice system in Florida, increasing funding for substance abuse and mental health issues, and creating innovative solutions to transportation issues. I can tell you that I had the distinct pleasure of being present when Senator Rusan spoke at our drug court graduation, um, I still remember his speech and it has motivated me as a prosecutor to continue to try to help those seek treatment in our criminal justice system and I thank him for that. Since Senator Rusan began his tenure in the Florida legislature, he has regularly listed as one of Tampa Bay's most influ influential politicians. Senator Rusan was also appointed to serve as a commissioner on the Constitutional Revision Commission, which meets every 20 years to make changes to the Florida Constitution. It is that that he will be speaking to us uh, about today. Mr. Rusan received a, a college degree in 1977 from Xavier University in New Orleans and graduated from law school at the University of Florida in 1980. He is married to Angela Rusan and is proudly raising five boys while practicing law in the Tampa Bay area with the Dolman Law Group. Please give a warm Kiwanis welcome to Senator Rusan. Good afternoon. It is really a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm not always invited back. <laughs> so I have learned in the course of years to just speak my truth. I was elated to see some familiar faces when I walked in the room. And Byron, thank you for taking me on your little sailboat <laughs> fishing. And I haven't been fishing since. <laughs> we need to go again. <laughs> I represented this area for eight years. And I miss Manatee, 
Sarasota portions of the district. And I was sharing with Dr. Probstfeld that when visitors come to Tallahassee, you would think I never stopped representing the area. Uh, but it's because I built uh, good relationships, worked hard to represent this area. And one correction to my introduction, I'm no longer with the Dolman Law Group. I'm with the Rubenstein Law Firm, one of Florida's fastest growing personal injury firm with an expert team of lawyers to meet all of your personal injury needs. And by employing me, they support my public service. It takes a special relationship with an employer to understand that their employee will be in Tallahassee five to six months out of the year. And I want to be very sober in thanking them for this opportunity to both serve at the highest level I've ever served at and practice law and represent the injured. I want to thank President Bill Galvano, a man, a legislator with whom I serve and for whom I have great respect and I'm in his home turf. I thank the Senate President designee for not kicking me off the floor of the House. You see, he was rules chair when I was a young member in the House, and I had pushed a bill that would have increased sales taxes on crack pipes and bongs and water pipes and used the 25% sales tax for drug treatment. And I had gone around the Bay Area closing some of these shops when a parent of a Gibbs High School student came to me and said, how do we tell our children don't smoke dope, don't smoke marijuana, yet a head shop is 100 yards across the street from the school, selling any kind of pipe you could imagine. And, and in that session of the legislature, we passed increases in fines and fees and other such things and raise the tax on a pack of cigarettes, but I couldn't get them to tax a bong. So I was mad about it and I went to a head shop in Tallahassee and I bought about $200 worth of the pipes, went to Home Depot and bought a construction hat and glued the pipes on the hat. And I said, I'm gonna wear it on the floor of the house as an in your face, we have passed sales, other sales taxes, increased fines and fees, but we couldn't put a tax on a crack pipe. And Galvano saw that I was about to pull the hat out and wear it, and he sent the sergeant at arms over, and Sergeant Ernie Sumner said, Mr. Representative, with all due respect, Rules Chair Galvano said, it's either you or your hat. So I gave up the hat. Thank you, Bill. While I don't currently represent uh, Manatee, Sarasota counties, of the seven senators in Tampa Bay, I'm the only Democrat. I'm the only one that has both sides of the Bay. 58% of my district is Hillsborough, Apollo Beach, Riverview, Brandon, all of Ybor City. Jackson Heights, Seminole Heights, Robles Park, Sulphur Springs, East Tampa, up to Fowler Avenue, and downtown Tampa. And then it jumps across the bay, and I represent downtown St. Pete from 22nd Avenue north to the Skyway Bridge and all of Gulfport. That's 42% of my district. I now know why they gave me the vice chairmanship on the Florida Senate Transportation Committee because I'm the only Tampa senator that has to navigate the Howard Franklin, the Gandhi, the Skyway to get to portions of my district. I served on health care appropriations in the Senate because substance abuse and mental health is a very important topic, a very important subject matter. In fact, I promised the voters uh, 
that there would not be a stronger senator in the Florida Senate on the issues of substance abuse and mental health than me. Today makes 20 years, four months to the day that I celebrate sobriety. March 17, 1998, when I woke up in Hazelden, and through the grace and the mercy of God and the 12-step program of recovery, I stand in front of you today. We lost 5,725 Floridians in one year, 2016, to the addiction epidemic, the opioid crisis. And 14 to 16 were dying every day until the Parkland shooting, when 17 people tragically and horrifically lost their lives in one day. And the whole world was watching. And the legislature was moved by these eight to 9,000 young people that descended upon Tallahassee and stopped us dead in our tracks. And we found $404 million to put towards this crisis. And since then, 14 to 16 continue to die every day in this state due to addiction issues. And that's why during the off season, I have been traveling the state. Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, next week, July 23rd and 24th, I'll be in Jacksonville touring drug treatment facilities, mental health hospitals. And last week, I got a chance to sit in with Judge Leifman on his mental health court and tour the $42 million retrofitting of an old psychiatric hospital that they're going to use for post-arrest diversion of the mentally ill so that we stop criminalizing those who have mental health challenges. I serve on the Criminal Justice Policy Committee, which has encouraged me to work hard towards second chances, to work hard towards sentencing reform, and thus we have Amendment 4 on the ballot, which will allow certain offenders to reintegrate and be able to participate in society again once they've paid their debt and done their time and that is the ability to vote. Next session, I hope to serve on the Arts Committee. No senator in Tampa Bay has more arts, theaters, and museums than me. I have Dali, Chihuly, the James Western Civilization Museum, Morian, Imagine, Great Explorations, in my St. Pete area of my district, American Stage, Palladium, Mahaffey Theater. And then because of the portion of downtown Tampa I represent, I have Morsani, Strass, Tampa Theater, Improv, all in my Senate district. And that's why I met with Brianne Basayo with South Florida Museum, because arts got cut 90% this year from state funding because of Hurricane Irma, urgencies and the parkland crisis and I hope to restore the funding of the arts when we get back to Tallahassee. So those are some of the things that I've done and I've worked on and I know that we're here today to talk about the Constitutional Revision Commission and there's a lot to say about that. 37 people who meet once every 20 years, this was only its third time meeting in the history of this state, to take a look at the Constitution for changes. Of the 37 members of the Constitutional Revision Commission, three of us were Democrats. Now that should say a little something right there about how the deck might be stacked. But of the Democrats on that commission, I was the only one successful in getting a measure on the ballot in November. And that's Amendment 11. And I have to apologize to you. We took 18 proposals and log rolled them and bundled them 
and some would say for sinister purposes, some would say for expedient's sake so that you don't get ballot weary, but I think it's a travesty that you don't get to vote on each measure by itself. I mean, how do you put oil drilling in the same ballot initiative with vaping in a restaurant and call it environmental? How do you put Marcy's Law, which deals with victims' rights, and tag it with term limits, uh, age, age limits for judges? How do you take school board term limits and tag it with other things unless you just want to make sure that one thing passes that would have been in trouble by itself on the ballot? I'm going to ask you to do your homework. There's a lot to study when it comes down to November, and you've got time to do it. And I mean take each one seriously. The two that were left alone dealt with Greyhound racing and with lobbying by former officials. And I have to say that it was hard to vote against an anti-lobbying bill as an ethics reform but I think it drills down too far. I had filed a proposal that would have captured state senators, state representatives, agency heads and secretaries, and the governor's office, and prohibit them from turning around and for compensation, for pay, lobbying the very agency or other agencies of government that they interacted with. And I thought that made some sense. But former Senate President Don Gates, Commissioner Gates on the CRC, thought we should drill it down to include school board members, college presidents, county commissioners, city councils, sp special fire district personnel, mayors. And I thought that was going a little too far. But it's hard to vote against something that seeks to clean up the cesspool of lobbying for pay by former officials in government. So there's a lot that's going to be on this ballot. Uh, I was very proud to have served. Much of the negative feedback that we got centered around the bundling. Uh, we had more public hearings than any other CRC in the history of this state. We had more submissions by the public, thousands of submissions uh, for proposed ballots. And we actually voted on about 600. As we go back into Tallahassee this year, there are a number of things that are going to be very important. One is education. I served on K through 12 Education Appropriations Committee in the House. And many of our communities and school districts are still reeling from failing schools. We're going to have to do something about that and work hard on that. Criminal justice reform, health care reform are always paramount. So that's a little bit about uh, the CRC, I'm, I'm glad to be here today. I don't want to bore you long. Uh, I'm glad to answer some questions. If you have some questions ab about the CRC or about the legislature, and I'm grateful to be in Senator Galvano's territory. Questions? Yes, Jan. The comment was, thank you for fighting for the arts. Well, we, we have to. You know, so goes the arts, so goes our communities. Uh, one of the things that we're going to be looking at is arts therapy in mental health, uh, which is very significant. And I can't tell you the number of facilities that I've toured where the clients are engaged in the arts, in drawing and those kinds of things. But when 
bad things happen that need funding, the first area that gets cut is the arts. And I'm committed to restoring that funding. Questions? Yes, Dr. Probstill. Senator Son, you said that you were the only Democrat on the committee, or on the commission, that got one of your proposals served. Can you talk about that? Yes. Uh, Amendment 11 uh, contains three things. One is it gets rid of an archaic phrase in our Constitution that deals, that prohibits non-citizens from owning property. The second thing in there deals with my amendment, sentencing reform. Some of you may remember the Marissa Alexander case in Jacksonville where we thought it was egregious that she caught 20 years for defending herself against a violent abuser when convicted by the jury of firing a gun in self-defense. The legislature thought that that was a mistake and we changed the law to allow for a certain defense and to change the sentencing from mandatory to, to judicial discretion. But because of a phrase in the Constitution, we were prohibited from applying it retroactively to Marissa Alexander. The, the ballot initiative allows the legislature, in its wisdom and in its discretion, if it wants to correct a mistake, to apply it retroactively. Some of you may remember the 80s when mandatory sentencing for possession of crack cocaine or trafficking in crack decimated communities. And then we went about changing that law. But there was no way to apply it retroactively. And it only refers to sentencing, not to prosecution. So the amendment allows the legislature to correct a mistake. Well, thank you. Uh, Senator Roussan, it is a tradition at Bradenton Kiwanis to provide you with the Kiwanis Golden Rule. It is to help you undoubtedly measure your daily, yearly success in the legislature and in our communities. We thank you so much for everything that you do. We appreciate you being here today, and with that, we bestow upon you the Kiwanis Golden Rule. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With that, thank you all so much for coming. We greatly appreciate Senator Roussan for being here, and we are adjourned.